welcome to this session. In this class, we will be looking into the uh, standard Eigen value problem or the Sturm Lewis value problem and its property and we will be looking into a generalized problem. Uh, let us consider the operator, general operator L as L u equal to a 0 x d square u d x square plus a 1 x d u d x plus a 2 x u. So, let us consider this operator and uh, we'll, on, on separation of variable we may be getting a relationship like this. A 0 u double prime plus a 1 u prime plus a 2 u plus lambda a 3 u is equal to 0 and where lambda is a constant. Let us assume the Dirichlet boundary condition that at x is equal to 0 and x is equal to 1, we have u is equal to 0. Now, this equation can be written in a compact form as L u plus lambda a 3 u is equal to 0 or it will be written in the form of L u is equal to minus lambda a 3 u. Now, if you look into the formation of this equation, the form of this equation, the equivalent notation in the matrix algebra in the discrete domain. This is a continuous domain, we are talking about the functions, continuous functions. Now, in the discrete domain in the matrix, if you look into the similar form of equation, similar form corollary is that uh, for matrices, the similar type of equation we can see as A x is equal to lambda x and this is known as eigenvalue problem. Therefore, in case of the continuous domain for functions, this is a standard eigenvalue problem. Okay. So, let us consider this is a equation 1. Now, this equation 1 can be rewritten in this form, means equation 1 can be rewritten as d d x of p x d u d x ok. So, this is the end of it plus q x u plus lambda r x u is equal to 0. Now, this equation can be written in this form where we will be defining p x, q x and r x in terms of the original coefficient a 0, a 1, a 2 and a 3. So, let us define that p x is nothing but e to the power integral a 1 x divided by a 0 x d x q x is equal to a 2 x over a 0 x times p and r x is equal to a 3 x divided by a 0 as a function of x times p. So, if you define, so if just the, this equation can be, um, uh, if you define these quantities p, q and r in the equation number 1, then you will be getting back the equation 1. This is very simple, very uh, you know simplified case. So, if you take the logarithm of both side and then differentiate. So, ln p is equal to a integral a 1 x divided by a 0 x d x. So, if you differentiate it, so you will be getting uh, d p d x 1 over p is equal to a 1 by a 0 and similarly, q q x is given as a 2 by a 0 times p and if you just put it back, you will be getting d d of, of, the, of the governing equation. So, I just establish the identity of both the equation to be same p d u d x plus q u plus 
lambda r u this becomes p d square u d x square plus d p d x d u d x plus q u plus lambda r u. So, just substitute p, uh, the p is uh, just as leave it as p. Okay. So, if this is the equation, right, this is the equation, then we will be getting p d square u u double prime plus d p d x, d p d x is nothing but a 1 by a 0 times p plus q is a 2 by a 0 times u plus there will be a p there q so in the in, in the in lambda r is a 3 by a 0 times p u is equal to 0. So, p will be cancelling out from each step and then you multiply both side by all sides by a 0. So, what you will be getting is that uh, a 0 u double prime plus a 1 there will be a du d x here. So, a 1 u prime plus a 2 u plus lambda a 3 u is equal to 0. So, these two equations are identical. So, this will be giving you l u is equal to minus lambda a 3 u. So, substitution substituting uh, p q r by defining p q and r this equation equation number 1 is equivalent to this equation. <coughs> so, these two equations are identical. So, let us see what do we get out of it. So, L u is now becomes d d x of p d d x plus q multiplied by u. So, therefore, p x u double prime plus d p d x u prime plus q u is equal to l u. So, l is now becomes d d x of p d d x plus q. Okay. Now, earlier we had if l of v is equal to a 0 v double prime plus a 1 v prime plus a 2 v then l star v will be nothing but a 0 v double prime plus 2 a 0 prime minus a 1 v prime plus a 0 double prime minus a 1 prime plus a 2 times v. This we have already proved earlier. In the last class, we have proved this. Now, if you uh, compare a 0, a 1 and other things, so, if you if you compare this one this equation number uh, equation number 3 with uh, 4 that we have already seen earlier that a 0 is nothing but p of x uh, therefore, a 1 is nothing but d p d x and a 2 is equal to q of x. So, l star v is nothing but p v prime double prime plus 2 p prime minus p prime times v prime plus p double prime minus p double prime plus q is equal to into v. So, therefore, this becomes p v double prime plus p prime v prime plus q times v. So, therefore, you can always see that l star is equal to l. So, l star will be nothing but what is l star? l star is p d square d x square plus d p d x times uh, d p prime d d x plus q. So, this will be nothing but d d x of p d d x plus q. So, if you see that l is equal to nothing but l star. So, l is equal to this and l star is equal to this. So, l is equal to l star and 
our general storm level operator or or eigen value operator is a self adjoint operator operator in general is where l is equal to l star. Now, we will see that to prove b is equal to b star and if we, if we, if we uh, want to prove b is equal to b star, we have to we have to check let us say a generalized boundary condition, consider a generalized boundary condition. This will be no longer a Dirichlet boundary condition, consider a generalized boundary condition that at x is equal to a, we have alpha 1 u prime plus alpha 2 u is equal to 0 and at x is equal to b, we have beta 1 u prime plus beta 2 u is equal to 0 and then we will be looking into the bilinear concomitant. If we look into the bilinear concomitant, this becomes v a 0 u prime minus v prime a 0 u minus v a 0 prime u plus a 1 v u evaluated on the two boundaries a and b. Now, we, we have already proved that a 0 prime is equal to d p d x is nothing but p prime is equal to a 1 and uh, a 0 is equal to p and a 0 prime is equal to a 1. So, bilinear concomitant now becomes only you know it boils down into a 0 times v multiplied by u prime minus v prime multiplied by u whole thing evaluated between a and b. Now, if you are really do that and substitute the values, let us see what the bilinear concomitant will, will, will give us. So, J u v is nothing but a 0 at b, v at b, u prime at b minus a 0 at b, v prime at b, u at b minus a 0 evaluated at a, v at a, u prime at a minus minus plus a 0 at a, v prime at a and u at a. We already had the boundary condition of the original problem as that at x is equal to a we had al alpha 1 u prime plus alpha 2 u is equal to 0. So, we can substitute at x is equal to a u prime at a. So, u prime at a we can substitute and then at x is equal to b we have beta 1 u prime plus beta 2 u is equal to 0. So, we can substitute this two. So, j u v will be nothing but a 0 at b, v at b and u prime at b will be nothing but minus alpha 2 by alpha 1 u at b minus a 0 at b, v prime at b, u at b and minus a 0 at a, v at a and u prime at a we uh, substitute okay this was u prime at b so um, uh, this will be beta 2 this will be nothing but this will not be beta alpha two, alpha 2 this is beta 2 and beta 1 and u prime at a will be alpha 2 minus, minus alpha 2 by alpha 1 times u at a minus plus a 0 at a v prime at a and u at a. Now, we can collect the terms. Uh, for example, we can take uh, a 0 b 
and u b common from this one from the first two terms. So, if you really do that a 0 b and u at b we take it common. So, what is remaining is minus beta 2 by beta 1 v at b minus we can take minus also common from first two uh, first two terms. So, it will be plus beta 2 by beta 1 v at b plus v prime at b and we can take uh, a 0 a as common minus minus plus. So, it will be plus a 0 at a common and v and u at a common. So, if you do that what you will be getting is alpha 2 by alpha 1 u at a plus uh, v uh, sorry v at a the plus v prime at a. Now, if I select this equal to 0 this boundary at this boundary x is equal to b and at this boundary x equal to a this whole thing is common let us see what you get. In order so, if we really select that uh, and then bilinear concomitant will vanish. So, at x is equal to a if we select alpha 2 v plus uh, v prime a divided by alpha 1 is equal to 0. So, that will give me alpha 1 v prime plus alpha 2 v is equal to 0 at x is equal to a and at x is equal to b I will be getting beta 1 v prime plus beta 2 v will be 0 to make bilinear concomitant to vanish. So, this will be now my b star or boundary condition of the adjoint problem. Now, we have we see that b is equal to b star and we have already proved l is equal to l star for a generalized eigenvalue problem. So, the standard eigenvalue problem operator uh, is a self adjoint operator. So, a 0 d square d x square plus a 1 d d x plus a 3 a 3. Uh, so, this will be a, if this is the form then l u is equal plus lambda a 1 this will be a 2 plus lambda a 3 will be 0. So, this is a standard eigenvalue problem and in this standard I this is a generalized form of standard eigenvalue problem or it is also known as the Storm Louisville problem. And we have proved that a Storm Louisville problem is nothing but a self adjoint problem. So, L is equal to L star and B is equal to B star in this particular case and we are having a self adjoint operator with us. Now, by establishing the storm Louisville problem or standard eigenvalue problem is a self adjoint problem a self adjoint operator then let us see what are the various properties of the self adjoint problem we can exploit for using separation of variable. Now, there are certain salient problems of the standard eigenvalue problems are there for the self adjoint operator the important properties of self adjoint operators. operator we should look into. So, uh, the first property that goes as a theorem number 1 is that there is a countable infinity infinite number of eigenvalues present for a storm Louisville problem. So, the number of eigenvalues present in the system is infinite in number. So, therefore, we will be talking about a, a infinite dimensional space and it is basically 
a fun continuous function having infinite infinite dimension. So, number of eigen eigen values will be infinite and number of eigen functions will be infinite. Then the next important theorem is that uh, um, uh, the the eigen the if if phi m this is the corollary one is that if phi m and phi n are orthogonal with respect to weight function R x. So, this is a definition of orthogonal functions phi m and phi n are the two functions which are said to be orthogonal with respect to each other uh, we, we, uh, and uh, with the weight function R then if this equation is satisfied integral a to b r x multiplied by phi m multiplied by phi n d x is equal to 0. So, for m naught is equal to n. So, this is known as the uh, orthogonality condition condition. So, next what we will be showing next theorem that for if, if lambda n and lambda n are the two distinct eigen values of the storm Liouville problem with the eigen functions y m and y n, then y m and y n are orthogonal functions with respect to weight function r. So, let us look into the theorem and look into its proof. So, next theorem which will be quite important to us is that if lambda m and lambda n are two distinct eigen values, this is important to distinct eigen values with eigen functions y m and y n then y m and y n are orthogonal functions with respect to weight function r x. So, let us prove this theorem. So, uh, proof goes like this the Sturm Liouville equation becomes L y is equal to minus lambda r y, where r is a function of x subject to boundary condition b is equal to 0, where the domain of x lying between b and a. So, since uh, lambda m and lambda n are the eigen values with the eigen functions y m and y n, they will be satisfying this equation. So, I can write L y n is equal to minus lambda n r y n l y m should be is equal to minus lambda m r y n. Then what we will be doing? We will be multiplying equation 1 with respect to y m, multiplying equation 2 with respect to y n and integrate and subtract. So, what I will do next is integral of y n l y m d x minus y m l y n d x. Okay. So, this becomes um, minus lambda m r y m y n d x minus minus plus lambda n r y m y n d x. Okay. So, we will be getting on the right hand sides at as lambda n minus lambda m integral r y m y n d x. So, next what we'll, we will we invoke the property of the adjoint operator and if we look into the property of the adjoint operator that integral of u l v is nothing but integral of l star u l star u v 
plus j u v. We utilize this property and we, we, we put down the first integral y n l y m d x as integral y m l star y n d x plus j y m y n minus integral y m l y n d x is equal to right hand side is lambda n lambda n minus lambda m integral r y m y n d x. So, what I do I, I, I put y, u is equal to y n u is equal to y n and v is equal to y m. Okay. So, then expanded the first function in terms of its adjoint variable. So, in terms I, I just wrote this one in terms of adjoint operator in the form of this and we will be getting this. So, we have already proved that stram louisville operator is L is equal to L star is a self adjoint operator. So, I can so and, and j y m and y n is equal to 0 that we have already proved earlier that stram louisville operator is a self adjoint operator. Using that condition we can write integral y m L is equal to L star. So, y n d x minus integral y m L y n d x is equal to lambda n minus lambda m integral r y m y n d x and uh, this was off because of this and this two will be equal and opposite. So, you will be having lambda n minus lambda m multiplied by r y m y n d x is equal to 0. So, lambda n and lambda m are two distinct eigenvalues. So, lambda n is not equal to lambda m. So, this cannot be equal to 0. So, what is left is this integral has to be equal to 0. So, therefore, integral of r y m y n d x is equal to 0. So, what this means? This means that eigen functions are orthogonal functions. are orthogonal with respect to weight function r x. This is known as the weight function. So, let us summarize whatever we have done. We have looked, we have defined a standard eigenvalue problem and we have looked into the properties of the standard eigenvalue problem and we have proved that standard eigenvalue problem or strom louisville problem is a self adjoint operator or self adjoint problem. Here L is equal to L star and B is equal to B star. Then you have looked into the properties of the standard eigenvalue problem which will be using quite often in your course. Number one property is that it will be it will be having infinite number of eigenvalues and so it will be talking about a infinite dimensional space. So, it will be a almost a continuous space. So, therefore, uh, second important property is that uh, the eigen if the eigenvalues are distinct corresponding to eigen functions and the, the if eigen values are distinct then the eigen functions will constitute a set of orthogonal functions with respect to the weight function r. If the equation is in the form of l u is equal to minus lambda r u then r can be identified as the weight functions and the corresponding eigen functions will be orthogonal to each other with respect to the weight function r. Now, in the Cartesian coordinate system, we have seen the corresponding equation is d square y d x square plus lambda y is equal to 0. So, here the weight function r is equal to 1 and this equation is a special form of standard eigenvalue problem where a 0 is equal to 1, a 1 is equal to 0 and a 2 is equal to 0. So, we got the corresponding equation in the Cartesian coordinate system as a subset of the standard eigenvalue problem in its general form. So, we have talked about the we have considered the general form of the standard eigenvalue problem or the stam louisville problem and established that it is a it, it forms a self adjoint situation a self adjoint system and we have looked into the various properties of the self adjoint operator and we, now we are in a position to start with the actual problem using separation of variable type of solution. Thank you very much.